Alright guys, so continue with 2.4 born haber cycle. Okay, our learning objectives will be to define lattice energy, electron affinity, and ionization energy. And then we're going to explain the following effects. How do ionic charges and ionic radii change the magnitude of your lattice energy? And then we're going to learn how to construct von Haber cycle for simple ionic solids like NaCl okay, using energy cycle diagram, which you've learned before. And then calculate your delta H using born Haber cycle. Lattice energy or delta H lattice. First, we need to know what is lattice. I think you should know by now that lattice looks like this. It has a certain grid. It is closely packed atoms. So we have two types of lattice energy actually. We have lattice formation energy and we have lattice dissociation. So lattice formation is when energy is released to form one mole of ionic solid. In this case, we have an ACL ionic solid being formed from its gaseous ions. So lattice formation is exothermic. Okay, when we form our lattice, we will release energy. Lattice dissociation energy is the one that we've used before uh, in Hess's law in delta H solution, right? So this one is energy required, so energy absorbed to completely separate or dissociate one mole of your ionic solid. So basically you're going to separate your ionic solid, so you will need energy, okay? You will absorb energy, okay? And then you will get your gaseous ions in this reaction. So this is endothermic reaction for lattice dissociation. So the magnitude of our lattice energy actually depends on two factors. So the first factor is the charges on our ions. So the higher the ionic charges, okay, then the higher the magnitude of our lattice energy. This is because when we have higher ionic charges, that means that our lattice is much more closely packed, okay, meaning they have stronger forces of attraction between themselves. So, when we are forming this lattice, we will need more energy, okay? So, let's say here we have MgF2 and MgO. So, MgF2 uses F- minus with minus 1 charge, while MgO uses O2- minus with minus 2 charge. So, O2- minus is a higher charge than F-, minus. therefore, MgO has stronger force of attraction between the ions. Okay? So, stronger force of attraction means that more energy will be released when we are forming this lattice. Same as uh, dissociation, okay? more energy is absorbed in order to dissociate this lattice compared to MgF2. All right? So, the magnitude of your lattice energy depends on the charge of ions. The higher the charges on your ions means more energy is needed to dissociate the lattice i.e. more energy is released to form the lattice, okay, due to stronger force of attraction. The second factor is ionic radii. So, smaller ions means that your ions will be much closer together in the lattice. So, when they are much closer together, that means the lattice is stronger, okay, they have stronger force of attraction between the ions. Therefore, more energy is needed to form the lattice, okay, i.e. more energy is released to dissociate the lattice. So let's say we have LiF, lithium fluoride and sodium fluoride. So F is just F minus, so this is the same. So what makes it different is Li plus, lithium plus and sodium plus. So we know that sodium plus is larger than lithium plus. That means the ions in lithium fluoride are much closer together, okay, compared to the ions in sodium fluoride, okay. Since lithium fluoride has smaller ions, that means that the ions will be much closer together, therefore stronger force of attraction between the ions, and therefore more energy is needed to dissociate this 
more energy is released when we form this ionic compound compared to sodium fluoride. So size of ions will also affect the magnitude of your lattice energy. So ionization energy, IE, it is the minimum energy needed to remove one mole of electron from one mole of atoms in its gaseous state to form one mole of gaseous ions. So this basically actually means this chemical equation. So here we have one mole of electron being removed from one mole of atom in its gaseous state to form one mole of gaseous ions. Okay, so this is the first ionization energy or IE1. So this is the amount of energy that will be absorbed to remove this one mole of electron. The second ionization energy is much larger, okay, more energy is absorbed because now we are not removing from an atom but we are removing from a cation. So this element has a plus one charge, therefore it is much smaller, so more energy is needed to remove the one mole of electron from itself to form one mole of gaseous ions. Notice that for ionization energy, it will be minimum energy needed, okay, absorbed. That means your IE1 and IE2 must be positive value. Next, we have electron affinity or EA. This is the opposite of ionization energy. E, affinity means you want, you like, you attract electrons. All right. So it is the heat change. Okay. When one mole of gaseous atoms, okay, here our gaseous atoms gains one mole of electrons gains one mole of electrons to form one mole of gaseous ions all right so our electron affinity it can be exothermic or endothermic so electron affinity is the opposite of ie ie you remove electron okay electron affinity you gain one mole of electron what is important is that you need to know how to write these equations, okay? You need to know how. Bond-Haber cycle. So, Bond-Haber cycle is a series of chosen steps from elements to ionic compound for which all enthalpies, mostly delta H, are known experimentally except for lattice energy. So, what does it mean? It is actually, Bond-Haber cycle is an energy cycle which shows the formation of your ionic compounds okay whatever ionic solid like say an ACL to the saya suka sangat from its elements so elements maksudnya daripada sodium solid daripada Cl to gas okay until you get okay banyak-banyak delta H to get your an ACL ionic compound okay so all the delta h will be known except for lattice energy the lattice energy that you are looking for will be negative usually because this will be lattice formation of your ionic compound von Haber cycle is an application of Hess's law so it's a similar concept to your energy cycle diagram so there are two ways for you to um, construct your von Haber cycle the first way is energy cycle diagram that you've seen before where you have arrows from this to this and then to this to this to this but the second one is energy level diagram so for energy level diagram you will have a y-axis that says enthalpy and then you will have levels okay like when you absorb energy okay positive delta h then you will form this and then naik lagi delta H and then turun pula you release energy and then you will form this okay sampai you get your um, ionic solid all right so the question says construct a bond haber cycle for lithium fluoride wow okay satu jayat dia then you have to construct the whole bond haber cycle but it's okay it's kind of fun when you get to know how to do it okay B. Calculate the lattice energy of lithium fluoride from the following data. So, they already gave you all this data. So, what are you going to do with all this data? 
you will need to translate the data into thermochemical equations. That's why I told you writing the thermochemical equation correctly is very, very important. Okay, So, you need to know how to write the formation of lithium fluoride punya chemical equation, atomization of lithium solid, atomization of F2 gas molecule, ionization, electron affinity, and lattice energy. So, this lattice energy will be lattice formation lah, okay? Maksudnya, you are forming your LIF ionic solid. After you write down your thermochemical equations, the next thing you need to do is to sequence. Okay, sequence the thermochemical equation using F-A-I-E-L. So, file. So, file is the sequence that you will use when constructing your bond Haber cycle. So, what is F? F is actually formation. So, this will be the first one that you will write down. And then, you will continue with atomization E. Okay. Atomization, atomization. And then, I is what? Ionization energy. So, next is ionization energy. And then, E is electron affinity. You gain one mole of electron. Okay. And then L is lattice energy, lattice formation, okay? So you form your lattice. So this is the last one. Use file to draw the bond haber cycle, alright? So this is how you will write your thermochemical equations, okay? For formation, for atomization, okay? Ionization energy, electron affinity. Okay, and finally, lattice energy. Alright? So, for formation, you need to know that you form your solid ionic compound from its most stable state. And then, for atomization, you are changing from your element to your gaseous atom. Your gaseous atom. Okay? Atom. Gaseous. Okay? This one as well. Gaseous atom. And then ionization energy, you will be removing one electron from your gas atom. And then electron affinity, you will be gaining one mole of electron to form your gaseous ion. Okay. Once we have our gaseous ions, and then we will um, form our lattice. Okay. okay. So this is very important. Okay. Please practice by yourself and check with me if you have any problems. So, this one here is your von Haber cycle constructed as energy cycle diagram. Okay, so what you are going to do first, you are going to write down the equation for enthalpy of formation of lithium fluoride. And then you are going to put your value of delta H. So, that is your overall enthalpy change, okay, formation ni, lithium fluoride. And then you are going to do atomization of lithium, okay? You are going to form one, one gases lithium atom, okay? Awak mengatom kan dia. Awak nak satu je atom, okay? Then ionization energy, I. And then E, electron affinity. And then you are going to do your lattice energy. So how do we find the lattice energy? We will be applying Hess's law lah, remember? So, use clockwise equals to anti-clockwise. So, mana kita punya clockwise? Yang mana clockwise? This one. So, we have our delta H formation as clockwise. So, here delta H formation. So, equals to anti-clockwise. So, the rest are anti-clockwise, right? So, awak tambah lah. Delta H1, delta H2, delta H3, 4, and 5. Okay? So, delta H1, delta H2, delta H3, 4, and 5. Okay. So, you want to find delta H5. So, rearrange your equation to get your lattice energy of formation. Okay. Make sure you write your unit correctly. Kilojo per mole. So, this is actually the explanation for each of the sequence. F, A, I, E, L. So, make sure to read it and practice on how to write your thermochemical equation correctly, okay?